The drink I will make it today is one of our oldest uh, and mostly appreciated signatures called the Beta. It's been sold over 65,000 times throughout uh, our eight years of operation here at Team Cook. I picked the drink because it's a drink that can easily be made by anybody, but it's also a drink that can be easily tweaked when it comes to the choice of spirit or if you don't, or if you even want to choose spirit as well. So it could be a delicious mocktail. So the cocktail itself is a mix of Buffalo Trace bourbon. It's a mix of a carrot and ginger mix and a little bit of Aperol that we infuse with horseradish and also a splash of lemon for some balance as well. So we're going to start with 40 ml of the Buffalo Trace bourbon. We do 80 ml of the carrot and the ginger mix. I'm going to do 20 ml of lemon juice. The technique we're going to use is called uh, throwing. We use that because it's a quite juicy cocktail, so we want to lighten up the texture a little bit of the cocktail without adding too much dilution to drink. So basically what you do is you're going to transfer the liquid from this container to this container. How you do it, if you do it up and down or from side to side, that's up to you. You're gonna serve it in a double fashion glass with regular cubes. And since a lot of the taste actually comes from the nose, we're going to garnish it with a little bit of horseradish as well. That's pretty much it. You see it? <laughs> the main flavor is obviously the carrot working with here. So it gives you an earthy flavor. But we add a little bit of spicy flavors from fresh ginger juice as well. But also horseradish gives a nice earthy and both spicy flavor as well. But we only use uh, infusion when it comes to the horseradish. So it's a little bit more subtle than the actual ginger and the carrot flavor. But in this case, today we are working with uh, Buffalo Trace bourbon as well, which gives it a nice vanilla and caramel note, which is delicious with ginger as well. I'd probably say go easy on the ginger. It's easy. It's a very powerful flavor when you're working with fresh ginger juice. So take it easy, start low, and rather work your way up to find the balance that you want. You can shake the drink as well, but the main difference is that you're going to add more dilution to the cocktail, which isn't necessarily bad, but you add bigger air bubbles as well, rather than you, when you throw the drink. But if I would start out to throw a drink, the main tip, start high. This one, my right hand, is gonna stay still and just pull the other one down. So you don't have to do a little bit of both because that's gonna throw you off the balance. Feel stuck with that and work your way down. It's easy to like in a way you could say, but also because you could uh, alter it to follow your own flavors. Not everybody likes vodka or acrobeat or bourbon in this case, or a lot of people don't like alcohol. So you can, this cocktail can be modified in so many ways to fit a bigger crowd, in my opinion.
So uh, making a mocktail, making it with a mezcal for a smoky flavor, making it with aquavit for a little bit more cleaner caraway profile as well. So that's pretty much why I picked it. As a low alcohol, you can just take out, uh, take out the spirits, everything. And just use, uh, yeah, exactly. And just use the carrot and the ginger mix. We use a splash of Aperol in there, but it's like if you break it out to a, to a final cocktail, it's less alcohol than a non-alcoholic beer. So, but it's also, it's going to be there, but it's less alcohol than a non-alcoholic beer. It is actually from our first menu back in 2015. So of course the menu has evolved and developed into maybe something a little bit more, but a little bit more sustainable, you could almost say, because for in this, this, this case, we use a lot of fresh juices. As now, eight years later, we removed pretty much all fresh juices of our menu to keep down the wastage of our cocktails. So we don't work with any lemon or lime this day. Sure, we have it in our bar in order to create a good classic cocktail, such as the Beta, but also a personal favorite of a guest, of course. But in uh, today, we reduce all the lemon and lime, all the fresh juices to reduce the waste of the cocktails, pretty much. Like I said, Himcook is probably the perfect bar, especially if you're just visiting Oslo. Because the main idea with him cook is to display Norway, you could say in general, like Norwegian flavors, Norwegian products. We work closer with Norwegian producers, but also Norwegian traditions and ideas as well. But what makes our menu pop a little bit extra is that roughly 80% of all the spirits that we use in the entire house is distilled in this room that I am now. So we have our Inos distillery where we create the gin vodka and a Nordic spirit called Acrobeat as well, which by the way works perfect all three in this kind of cocktail as well. So that kind of makes us pop a little bit extra as well, because uh, since you can alter it from these early stages, it really gives you the opportunity to create something unique at the end of the day. Of course, of course, of course it is. Sure, you can get Norwegian vodka, Norwegian gin, and uh, Norwegian acrobeat as well. But distilling it yourself as well, you're reducing a lot of the transportation costs, etc. And at, at the end as well, like the botanicals, sure, some are imported because we can't uh, really grow everything here in Norway. But everything is based on Norwegian potatoes that are like, leftover potatoes from a potato farmer who had way too much potato to make fries of everything. So he sells us a neutral spirit base. Of 96% that would then re distill with our flavors. The bar scene is better than it's ever been right now. When Himco opened back in 2015, it wasn't much going on, especially when it came to the cocktails itself. Because in this smaller bar that we're in now, we do more tables like sit down service with our signature menu. We have a host greeting at the door. When that started, uh, it was nothing like it in the uh, entire Norway, pretty much. So the cocktail scene was a quite late bloomer. But from uh, 2017, 18, 19, there's been popping up a lot of good craft cocktail bars in Oslo. Well. 